does it always do that? Whenever I... Whatever. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay. So, how's everyone doing? You're stinky, Zeno. Stinky, stinky, icky. No, they're my shoes. And fucking... Moira, thank you for getting me the new Destiny expansion. I very much appreciate it. <laughs> bottom detected? No! You're a bottom. You're a bottom. Oh, gee. But, alright. Yo, like, title of the stream. Uh, answer the question. Warlock's limitations have ruined a character you have? Yeah! <laughs> That's why today we're making character in Path in D&D, in &D, and then we're making them in Pathfinder, and then we're gonna see how, sh how, you know, it stacks up. Uh, use Warlocks are, yeah, Warlocks are Pog, but depends on the system. If you're DMing that's table ball, fuck! <laughs> fuck you! I heard that as well, fuck you! Warlocks have a nothing spell list? Uh, Warlocks have a nothing spell list because wizards want you to use your cantrips. The in Destiny one. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, my, 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 my flow is gone now. S fucking dickheads. Oh, boy. Alright. Well, hello. So, how's everyone doing? I... have plans. Um... I need to get- I need to talk to Sprig. I need to ask Sprig, like, about all- like, all the kobolds they know. Because I- I want to do that kobold game that we found. Use cantrips, doesn't have firebolt. What am I supposed to- how am I supposed to respond to that, Because you said that if I say- if I say it back, then it gets weird. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Oh, boy. Alright. So, we have... Who wants a bone? I do. Uh, okay. So... I tried to catch it. I was ready to catch... It's gotta take it like the bottom you are. Rude. Rude. I wish I could, like, have, like, a thing when, like, the Bark Redeem comes out, because I imagine on, like, the, um... I imagine on the actual, like, like, VOD, that, like, me barking out of nowhere probably sounds like the most, like, out-of-place fucking thing ever. Oh, well. Oh, well, it's fine. Um... Yes. Okay. Uh, so, goal, currently, is to make... So, we're, first off, we're gonna talk about TVRPG shit, just in general. Uh, namely, the fact that, uh, I just got done playing, uh, D&D, like, two hours ago, and, uh, hey, cat, how much gold did you think that Mal had? You thought that she had 40, 40 grand, so, uh, so, so, so was it 4,000 platinum? Yeah, so, cat... Our dungeon master thought that uh, my character Mal had uh, f had four thousand platinum. Who wants to guess how much I actually had? Who wants to guess? And cat, no, you cannot. You cannot enter in this. Eight K, no. It's more. So, okay, I want to, I want to specify, I want to specify here what I bought in today's, uh, in today's, uh, session that did not even really put that much of a dent in my finances. I purchased an orphanage, two orphans, a Vorpal Sword, and a Cloak of Arachnea. I bought those five things. It's called adoption. If you have to pay an adoption fee, it's a purchase. <laughs> I'm actually kidding. So, a Vorpal Sword, an Orphanage, two Orphans, and a Cloak of Arachnea. 
How much? My, how much? And that did not put a dent in my finances. Thank you for the resub, King. So, those five things. Two human beings. Two human beings who will be future characters of mine. A... A repository of... Oh, wait, oh yeah, I didn't pay the adoption fee. Right, okay, never mind. Remove the two orphans. Remove the two orphans. I bought the entire orphanage, though. Is this the D and D campaign stream? It's not a D and D campaign stream. It's a. It's a. It's. I'm going to be making characters and stuff. Uh, so two future characters, uh, and as well as a repository of future characters. The four ads. What the fuck, Galaxy? I Twitch just hates you. I guess I don't know, Chief. I really don't know. But yeah. So an orphanage, Vorpal Sword, Cloak of Arachnea. And I bought those three things, and it barely impacted my finances at all. And I want y'all to guess. I want y'all to guess how much money my character has. Cat thought I had 4,000 platinum. No. Five mil? No, they- she is not homeless, actually. She owns a mansion that she... inherited. There you go! Yep. 40,000 platinum. 400,000 gold pieces. I started the session today with 480,000 gold pieces. Or 48,000 platinum. Local drow wishes their way out of the Underdark, marries- marries an old guy who- an old noble. How? Okay, okay, so, uh, first off, I wished my way out of the Underdark using a wish spell and basically- and basically ruined the campaign, uh, because everyone peer pressured me into drawing from the deck of many things. Uh, we wound up in Waterdeep, and I, uh, stole from- so another player, Jacob's character, uh, had, uh, how much did he get? He, he got, he got, like, uh, 5,000 gold pieces, I think, from the deck of many things. I stole a little bit of that and did some high-class carousing, and I rolled a complication that, uh, I got married off to a noble scion. The noble scion being a older human. I'm a drow, so... You know, age doesn't really matter here. Um, he died of a heart attack that I did not cause, I swear. So I inherited his entire estate, and it's just kind of snowballed from there. Um, yeah, believe it or not, the economy in Dungeons and Dragons is incredibly fucked, and once you have a lot of money, it's very easy to maintain a lot of money. Dole is an evil- yes, a drow, yeah. To be fair, to be fair, she wanted to leave the Underdark because she was not vibing with how the drow do. So she's not evil. She does just does not understand how to exist in the non-evil society. So therefore, the drow word for adoption is purchase. The drow sexed him to death. I mean, he died of a heart attack. Unrelated topic, she's a soul knife, and when you die to a soul knife, uh, it looks like you had a heart attack. You know, like, completely, you know, separate thing, completely unrelated. Doing war crimes and humanity crimes. I mean, I mean, I am technically an unregistered magic user in Waterdeep, which is, you know, a crime, but... I mean, I'm also a drow assassin. I'm not gonna register my fucking magic, am I? She's evil, she doesn't know- No, she's not evil! If she was evil, she would've been fine with staying with the drow. Very important, have we walked the dog yet? Uh... I haven't. <laughs> I haven't. Okay, cat has. Citrine is technically evil too. Fair enough. Yeah. Like I like I I think my favorite my favorite characters are ones that like they don't understand like good or evil. Like it's Azela shut the fuck up, Zeno. Azela is a good noodle. She's literally chaotic good. 
Um, yeah, but I think my favorite characters, and I think the reason I like Mal so much, is that uh, her whole thing is that she is a good character, but her alignment is... Uh, I think her alignment might actually be true neutral by this point. Um, but, like, she would... If she was socialized with goodness, like, if she'd been raised in a good society, she would unironically be either neutral good or chaotic good. Like, as it stands... She is true neutral, and that's, and that's only because she doesn't understand. Like those two adult, those two orphans that she uh, has come into possession of, um, she does not understand how to raise children. So like, so we've kind of come up with a thing with like instinctually, she's really good. But whenever she tries to be a parent, it turns into a, all right, son, I got you a new, I got you a gift for your birthday. It's a knife laced with spider venom. Or, 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 you know, comes home, Mom, I was getting bullied at school. And did you stab them with the knife I got you? Yeah, that's my boy. You know. Good parent. Not so great on the theory, you know what I mean? Like... Being an unregistered mage in Waterdeep isn't illegal. No, it's illegal. Uh, we have a... We, we had the, um... It's called good... <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, Jesus. Well-meaning, but socially inept. That's exactly it. Oh, fuck. Alright. Yeah, d d is fun. Like, tabletop... I shouldn't say d d is fun, because tabletop is fun. d d is a fucking... is a clusterfuck. Oh, boy. Alright, so we... I don't know how long we're gonna be. I have a thing I want to do at, I do at 6. It's currently 3. So we have... just under 3 hours. So... All right, let's have a good time. So I kind of want to do, uh, like, so, so I, my idea was I wanted to do, like, uh, Mal's kids in D&D uh, &D and, and in Pathfinder. Uh, but the original idea was, oh, I'll just make a character. But now I actually kind of specifically want to do these kids. So, fuck it, Moira! I, I have to follow the schedule, Moira, or my brain will melt. I will play Destiny, don't worry. I will play Destiny, because I really want that grappling hook. But I have to follow the schedule. <laughs> Making them rogues? Uh, the boy is going to be a rogue, the girl is going to be a ranger. What's the schedule? Uh, the thing that I follow, because I have autism and I need a schedule, otherwise I do nothing. Um, that poor girl. <laughs> nah, 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 she's gonna be a good ranger. She's gonna be a good ranger. Her, her animal companion is a tressum. A tressum the size of a halfling, because it's a main coon. Or Baldur's coon, as we, de as we decided. Yeah, uh, it's kind of weird how, like, cat, cat breeds in, in, in D&D are, like, explicitly, like, earth breeds. Uh, so, yeah, whenever we run into them in, in our, on our table, we just kind of be like, yeah, no, just d and -ify the fucking, like, name. A main coon. Condemned to be. You know that other rangers have beast companions than beast, Beastmaster, right? Not just Beastmaster, I'm fairly certain. Uh, but yeah, have you never seen a main coon? Or are you talking about a Tressum? Hang on. So, um, hang on. Scabingus. Oh, I have to, I have to actually, let's get some music going as well. Hang on, I'll do that in a second. So, a Maine Coon. This is a Maine Coon. <laughs> they are f fucking huge. 
Can I can I find like a, a an, an image that's a better scale here? Yeah. Oh, you oh you don't know what a tresim is. All right, okay. Uh, tresim. A tresim is a winged cat. Hi, I see. They're not always that big, those are part lengths, yeah. No, they're just... Yeah, um, a... I mean, a Maine Coon can be as big, as tall as, like, three feet. Like, standing on all fours. Which is the size of a halfling. Like, imagine, imagine being a halfling, and just, like, you're walking around, and, like, there's just this fucking cat as tall as you. Oh god. So a halfling could ride into battle? Honestly, I don't know if a cat could support a halfling. Because halflings are fat bastards, and cats aren't exactly known for being, like, cat beasts of burden. Uh, halflings probably like really tiny dogs, you know what? Not incorrect. Like, look at how fucking big this bastard is! Like, holy sh- Oh god, when everyone was telling me that Tetra is part Maine Coon, uh, you know what? With this cat's face, I can fucking see it. Holy shit. Like, cat, do you see this? Like, that is just Tetra's face! So the kids are halflings? No, they're not. They're- they're humans. It's just she has a- It's just she has a, uh... She has a- a- a, a tresum- a tresum as a pet. Alright, um... Tetra's a very grumpy kitty. Exactly. <laughs> what? Oh, they are halflings! I thought they were humans. Okay, okay, so they are halflings. Yeah, so this kid is, uh, this kid is gonna reach its maximum height and be smaller than its pet. Yeah, okay, I, I misunderstood, I'm sorry. Um... Okay, so, let's make the ranger first. So, I... Oh shit, I don't, I don't know, fuck. Is there a path builder equivalent for D&D &D 5e that isn't D&D &D Beyond? Because I don't own any of the books and I don't want to go bug Jacob. What? Roll 20 character mancer? They don't hit three f feet? Make it in foundry? Oh god, fine, I'll make it in fucking foundry! Ugh! Main coons aren't that big. Okay, counterpoint, this is a tresim. Counterpoint, this is a tresim in a fake world. It does get that big. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's just you would not ride it into battle. No, like that's what I said. Like cats have cats have fucky spines. They can't they can't be ridden into battle. It'd be cool if they could, but they can't. Um. <laughs> All right. Uh. Okay, you know what I'll do? I'll just do it in Foundry. I'll just do it in Foundry. Give me a moment to set everything up in Foundry, and I will be. Did not mean to hit that button. Um, do, 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 do. I just have to set up my foundry. Sounds like a problem of breed a strong spine over. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm gonna be honest, you probably could actually breed, like, riding cats if you had, like, cats that were big enough. Like, breed tigers and shit. Gives moment. Oh no. Oh no, the moment's going too fast. Oh Jesus. Oh god. Oh fuck. Um. Scabingus. And. Uh. 
Give me just a moment. Give me just a moment. Give me just a moment. Because I am very dumb. Uh, so another fun thing here is that uh, Cat did not name the orphans. So it means I get to pick their names. Okay, so orphan one. And... Orphan two. <laughs> Alright, so we'll, yeah, so we'll do the, uh, we'll do the, 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 the girl first. What about a lion type? The liger? I don't know, I honestly, I think ligers have the same issue spine-wise, so. I don't think that's gonna work. But, alright. Orphan the first. So, so last name is gonna be Mal's name, so Ickard. Alright. So she's gonna be a ranger. Uh, name, 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 name. I'm going to call her. I'm gonna call her Gwen. Gwen Ickard. Hell yeah! All right. So let's just. I should probably roll stats first, shouldn't I? Ah, uh, fuck! I hate rolling stats. But um, all right. No, let's just. I'm just gonna import. Uh, halfling first. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. So this is gonna be them, like, after they grow up and everything, so... Uh, I get to... I, I can do some cool things. And they're siblings, so they're gonna have the same, like... Uh, let's say... Let's see, what, what do we... What do we... So what do we each of these sub-races do? Let us see. Uh, we got ghostwise halflings. They get silent speech to speak telepathically. Uh, Lightfoot halflings get naturally stealthy. Lotus dens get the ability to move across timber, difficult terrain of undergrowth without expanding movement. I mean, this one's going to be a ranger, so they get that anyway. Mark of healing, mark of hospitality, and stout, which is basically just a fucking dwarf, let's be honest. Like, stout ha Okay. Hot take. Stout halflings. <laughs> Stout halflings are just people that want to play fucking dwarves, but are too cowardly to fucking, like, nut up and have a beard. I'm gonna pick Ghostwise because Mal is a, is a telepath. Because she's a, 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 a soul knife rogue. So, at the very least, like, I imagine she would teach her kids how to do that at the very least. So, we'll take Ghostwise, not because that is what they're, they originally were, but because it's a taught skill. So, apply the ability modifications. And I'll apply it to, to this orphan, too, so. Ghostwise, import, yes. All right, so we are making a ranger. So we are going to need some dice. I don't want that dice. That dice has gold lettering. It's hard to read. Dr. Sue, sorry, there is thing one and thing two. <laughs> thing one and orf thing one, orphan one, thing two, orphan. Like, they're just like the kids that, like, the cat fucked with last, but he accidentally killed their parents and just fucking took them. I name you, my dear children, Kid One and Kid Two. I sent dozens of naps thinking about your lovely names for you. <laughs> okay, okay, so, like, Mal is actually a good parent. Mal is actually a good parent. Like, she tries. Like, she doesn't understand a lot of it, and, and like, you know, she, but she's trying her best, you know? I imagine she'd be the kind of person that, like, she's, it's like, she has no idea how, like, like, what to do. Like, she'd not plan on, ob on, on obtaining two orphans. Uh, but now she has them, and, like, it's, like, a matter of, like, like, you know how, like, someone who really just doesn't like cats, and then, like, they, they accidentally adopt a stray cat, and it's like, all right, so we can take it to the shelter. No! You're never taking Mr. Fluffles from me! I'll kill you! It's essentially that. Also why she's teaching them how to fight. So that if any, so that if anything happens, uh, they can just fucking, you know, they can look after themselves. 
and it, or at the very least hold out until she gets there to fucking bail him out. I play stout halflings because I want to be a happy-go-lucky foodie who's also the group's lucky charm due to bountiful luck. Uh, that, just play, just play a fucking mark of hospitality, like, halfling then, stinky. Alright. Alright, so first roll. Alright, bless my dice. Bless my dice, y'all. I, I should get a rolling tray, but, like, I don't, it, they're all downstairs. Alright, so we have a three, which we're going to ignore. We got a six and a four, and then another four. We got a fourteen for our first stat, so... I'm gonna put that there. Fourteen. Imagine playing a halfling. Hey, I didn't pick the race. I didn't pick the race. Cat did. So this is the most fun we're gonna have with dice, because Pathfinder, you don't roll for stats. Uh, that is a 1. We're gonna get rid of that. We've got a 4, a 2. That's a 6. Oh, that's a 9 total. That's not great, but I'll take it. And I'm not gonna re-roll these, by the way. These are the stats they get. Gonna play through flow through noodles again. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Alright. Alright, so that is a 6, a 5, that's 11, and 2, 13. Okay, so so far, not the most amazing... Min but worst part about Pathfinder is minimal click-clacks. Yeah, that's true. Like, at the very least, li minimal click-clacks in character creation. There's a lot more click-clacks in actual gameplay because you get to do three actions on your turn. Imagine orphans, but they're not kobolds or goblins. This is happening in Waterdeep. How many fucking goblin orphans do you think there are? Also, goblins become, like, adults at fucking six years old. So, like, they're not gonna be in the orphanage for very long. Shit, I dropped the dice. It's a six. Alright, so we have a six. A four. And a five. So that's 15. All right, this is, this is not bad so far. It's not like the character I rolled up yesterday that had a fucking uh, sixes across the board uh, on, on one of its rolls, giving it an 18, but not bad. What is Waterdeep? Waterdeep is a city in Faerun. It is okay, I guess. It is my favorite one. All right, so that's a six, a four, and a five. Uh, so that is a 15, again. Alright, this is not bad, we've got one more roll, and so far, like, minus that 9? This is all, like, pretty good st uh, pretty good stat spread. Faerun is the, uh, country that D Dungeons and Dragons generally takes place in. Alright, so that's a 1, we're gonna get rid of that, so we got a 6, a 5, and a 4. That is another 15! Holy shit! Alright, so that is, like... Three fifteens. That is pretty fucking decent. Holy shit. Alright, so we are gonna be making a We are gonna be making a Ranger, so we're gonna want Dex, we're going to want uh what is Ranger's casting stat? What is Ranger's casting stat? <laughs> what is what is their casting stat? Is it wisdom? It's wisdom. Okay. Thank you. So, so we're gonna want a decent wisdom, a decent dex, decent constitution, strength I'm not too fussed about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know, how, I know, I know what we're doing. Okay, so we're gonna give her a... We're gonna put the 9 into strength. Yeah, so dex, wiz, and con is like gonna be like what we want generally as our best as our best stats. So, hi Alice, hello! Alright, so we'll go for... we'll put a 9 there. We'll put... What subclass? Uh, I don't know yet. I'm... Th I'm gonna have to look at what the subclasses are. Uh, we'll go for a... we'll put one of the 15s here. Actually, no, we're gonna put the 14 here, and we're gonna get a 6, and that's gonna give us a 16. 
with the uh, halfling racial boost. Uh, we're going to put uh, the 13 in wisdom to give us a 14. And then we're going to go... Uh, and I think... Okay, well, hang on. So I've done... Okay, so that's one. F that's a 14, a 13, and now I have one 14 and three 15s to give out. So let's go... Is Faerun a 5e thing? Yes, it is. F-A-E, by the way. R-U-N. Fuck, now I've lost track of what I was doing. Son of a bitch. Um, okay, so that's the... That's the 14, that's the 13, that's the 9, so now it's 15s across the board. So, okay, so 15, oops, shit, whoops, 15, 15, 15. That is a pretty good fucking stat spread. That is a pretty good fucking stat spread. Like, the, the strength being 9 is not amazing, but, like... Sounds like I'm having a stats problem? No, I'm not having a stat problem. I'm having- Like, this is a really good fucking stat spread. Thank you, Icy. I do, I do not know how to do that little fucking arrow over the U, so... Yeah, like... That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Like, this- Like... So, like, when- Like, it seems like, like, you know, her whole thing is, like, she's not super physically strong, but, like... You know, she's got, like, a fairly decent- She's got decent decks. She's fairly hardy. She's pretty smart. Like... Remember, like, 10 is average. 10 is, like, average, right? So, like, you know, basic, like, high school graduate. 15 is, like, college student. Yeah, no, no, you're fine, Arsenal, yeah. Like, she's decently wise, she's fairly charismatic, like... This is, like, a really, really good start for a character, actually. Nope. D&D plays when they don't start with an 18. I'm having a stat problem. Yeah, like... I, I, unironically, I think this is actually a, a really good character so far. All right, let's have a look at Ranger. So, Rangers don't get their... When do Rangers get their, uh... Arch they get their archetype at three. So, what we'll do... I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make, uh, the level one. And then I'm gonna duplicate the sheet and make a... Th and do, and level her up to third level. Unless, because I do kind of want to use her in the next like f in next game that like Cat runs, whether in whether it's Pathfinder or 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 Five E. So, hey Cat, when do you generally start in Five E? I don't remember. Like, what level do you generally start players at, if you have a choice? Three. All right. Okay. So we can just go up to level three then. Fog, Ranger Assassin. Yeah, maybe. Let's see, so she's gonna have a Tressum, so like, let's see if they, which, which ones have pets, shall we? Uh, Dreadful Strikes, Fey Wanderer... <laughs> Is it only Beastmaster that gets a Beast Companion? People don't give me, especially, I mean, Ranger, like, Ranger's got, like, so much shit. Ranger's got so much shit, like, in Tasha's. Like, like, look at how much of this is, like, a light pink. Like, like, so, so yellow is stuff that was in the PHB. Pink is stuff that was brought in in Tasha's. Like, this is more, like, this is more fucking changes than any other fucking class got. Like, Tasha's essentially rewrote Ranger from the ground up. The one from Fizzmons gets a dragon pet. Yeah. I might just go Beastmaster, just to, uh, like, unless, like, there's another one that gets, a, gets, gets like, uh, a Tressum. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Uh I guess I'm just gonna like click them all and I'm just gonna see which one gets which ones get pets. 
So this one gets a companion, this one gets a companion, this one does not, this one does not, this one does not, this one does not, and this one does not. Swarmkeeper doesn't get one. Yeah, be so I'd have to be a Beastmaster. Like, so here's the thing, I have to play a character here that has a, uh, companion. My weird stretch grungled the text. Did it? I can see it just fine. Hang on. Let me let me let me move it over to my Okay, I'm like looking at the I'm looking at this on my like 1080p monitor and it looks fine. I can read it. I can zoom it in just fine. Like does that does that help making it bigger? Can they do a revised Beastmaster? Helps a lot. Okay, I am very sorry. I am very sorry. Okay, there we go. Alright. Yeah, so we'll go Beastmaster. Beastmaster did actually get some stuff. They got, like, Primal Companion. They got, like, some other shit. They got, uh, Deft Explorer improvement. Alright. Yeah, so we'll go, we'll go with a Beastmaster Ranger. Alright, so... I haven't actually played a ranger ever. I think I played a ranger once, and it did not go well. But that was not really... It was with a new DM that didn't really know what they were doing, so... Like, a kind of a sacrificial character at that point. Um... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Can't base master have fey companions? Uh, they can now! Say goodbye to my action. Alright, so we're going to import to level 3. Oh, fuck. We're gonna roll the bones. Okay, skill proficiencies. Oh damn, that's not bad. We got a... we rolled a 7 on our first health increase and then a 9 on our second. Not amazing rolls because we could have gotten a 12, but... That's still better than average. I mean, this one is average. This one is average here, but... But this one is better than average. Takes an action to command the beast? Well, meh. Her Dragonlance got new subclasses? I don't know. I haven't we got that part in the book yet. Alright, so of course we're going to go animal handling. We're going to go... Let's see, what, what, I mean... We can kind of just pick whatever, because, like, fucking look at our stats. Holy shit. As long as we don't pick something with strength, we're fine. Uh, we're gonna go stealth, and we're gonna go with nature. Alright, uh, scale mail's fine. Actually, wait, no, scale mail is not fine because we have, we have stealth. Okay, 11 plus dex, but I don't think it has a dex max, so... Yeah, this one's max 2, 11, so this is gonna come to... So that's 14. So if I wear scale mail, I've got a 16. I've got 16 AC. If I wear this, then I've got a 14 AC. I'm gonna go with the leather armor because then I can have stealth. Uh, we're gonna go with a bow for her. Can I not go for a bow? Oh, it has to be a melee weapon. Bug. Oh, wait, no, I get a long bow anyway. Okay, two short swords. That's fine. Do rangers transfer? No, that is a druid thing. Hydrate! Oh, I, shit, I don't have anything to drink. Shit. Myra, I'll get something in a minute, okay? Put the swords into the bow and shoot the- No! Uh, and we'll go with Explorer packs. I feel like that fits her more, uh, what I have in my head for her. So, Skabingus. Alright, okay! Uh, we get Deft Explorer. We get some- We get to, uh, expertise a skill. We're going to expertise our- so, here's the thing. So, Mal uh, has a plus 10 in stealth and advantage. So, I'm gonna say that uh, that expertise in sneaking around... She probably passed some of that to her kids. Uh, let's see. Let's give... Uh, I'm pretty, I, I wish that Drow was its own language. It's really just Elven, but you fucking swear a lot. Moira, you are very much underestimating how much Ranger has been improved since Tasha's came out. 
So we're gonna go with Elvish, and we're gonna go with... Uh... Let's go with Sylvan, if we can. Yeah, because, like, Sylvan and Elvish share a, share a language. Next. Okay, we're going to take the archery fighting style. What new abilities do rangers have? They've got a bunch. Uh, I'll, I'll go over them in just a minute. Doesn't know about under. Undercommon is different. Undercommon is the trade language of the, of the Underdark. It is not the drow language. Like... It does it, like it uses Elvish script, but it is but it is it, it is purely a trade language. Um, uh, like there's not like a lore dump about it, unfortunately. But uh, Tot yeah, Tasha's is a is an expansion book that came out, and it basically. Uh, essentially, it, it fixed a bunch of shit. It fixed Artificer, because Art basically, Artificer, as it was before Tasha's came out, was you could only really run an Artificer in either uh, Eber an Eberron setting, or in Faerun, but you'd have to gut a lot of it. Uh, when Tasha's came out, it reworked Artificer, so it would be setting agnostic. People can try and horn in sign language. Arsenal. Don't you fucking call sign language an, a fucking shoehorn. Sign language has existed in some form forever. Deaf people are not new. There has been some form of sign historically for, like, as long as there's been language. Otherwise, there'd be no... Otherwise, fucking, like, deaf people would, like, have just died instantly. Versus, you know, dying if, like, you know, they don't see someone who can sign, Hey, yo, there's a big fuck-off woolly mammoth behind you, my guy. I mean, if I say make it too common or wreck the story. So the thing with sign language is that, like, sign language does not mean, like, ASL. Sign language can just mean uh, being able to gesture in a way. To, and a lot of sign language is just gesturing. Like, fucking, uh, the sign, like, like uh, if you look at ASL, like, you can intuit a decent amount of it. <laughs> Sign okay, ASL is recent. ASL is standardized. Standardized sign language is recent. But there has been some form of sign language for ages. Because deaf people need some way to communicate. Myra, I will choke you to death! Like, actually. Oh, hey, look what I found when I just... I will take my apology now, please. I will take my apology now. Please hand over the apology before I wring your neck. Just saying. Like, like, it, like, fucking communicating via hand gestures is, is not that much of a fucking, like, like, novel concept, you know? 
like, sign language in the past may not have been able to be like, hey, yo, my name is uh, Shabingus Badingus, and my job is to do this thing, and this very specific thing with this very specific hand gesture, oh god, I've used fucking Katon, Fire Breath, No Jutsu. Instead, like, you know, it would have just been kind of like, hello, I'm... And then I'm, and then like they have like maybe like a thing written down. Steve, Steve, fucking, I, I am a blacksmith. You know, like basic shit like that, like pantomime and pantomime and shit. You know, like fucking. Also, yes, monkeys have sign language. Like, it's not like, you know, Coco the Gorilla, because Coco the Gorilla was fake, unfortunately. But, like, chimps do communicate by fucking, like, hand signals. Your name and sign is different from your certificate name. We're talking about, like, people in the past before... Whatever, 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 whatever. Moving on! Um... Okay, uh, so at first level, you can get Favored Enemy, which is the same as it's always been, blah 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 blah. Um, or you can have the better one. So- Give me your shoes! No, they're mine! So this- so Favored Enemy is, like, the default that, like, Rangers get, and it's... Maybe sorta kinda shit. It's maybe sorta kinda shit. <laughs> yes, I live challenge fourteen twelve. Fuck you. Um, so you basically you have to know ahead of time what enemy is going to be in your um in your in the campaign you're gonna play in. Like if you're playing in a campaign that's like set in Barovia, then yeah, you're gonna run into a lot of a lot of undead. So you can pick undead and be like, aha. But then you kind of run into the issue of like, okay, well, your character wouldn't know that, so then it's like, okay, well, pick it based on your character's backstory. Okay, well, unless you shoehorn in hunting undead as part of your character's backstory, at which point it'd be really fucking stupid for Strahd von Zarevich to summon you to his demiplane, huh? Um... <laughs> like... Like, 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 like... I really like the concept of Favored Enemy and the racism dice it brings, but I'm gonna be honest, it does really encourage metagaming in a way that's really, really bad. Um, Favored Foe is unironically a, just a better fucking version, because it gives you racism dice, but it gives you targeted racism dice. Uh, when you hit a creature, so I'm just gonna read this, uh, Choose a favored type of favored enemy, aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. Alternatively, you can select two races of humanoids, such as gnolls or orcs. This is why people call it racism dice, by the way. Um, uh, you have advantage on survival checks who track your favored enemies, as well as on intelligence checks or call information about them. When you gain this feature, you also learn one language of your choice as spoken by your favored enemies, if they speak one at all. Uh, you can choose one additional favorite enemy as well as associated language at 6th and 14th level. As you gain levels, your choice should reflect the types of monsters you've encountered in your adventures. So, like, on, yeah. Yeah, like, 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 this is, like, it's not a bad idea, but I feel like favorite enemy really needed to be reworked into less, like, at level 1, you choose, like, it, like, it shouldn't be, like, like, ah, yes, uh, level one, when you first start being a ranger, you choose what you're racist against. It should have been some, like, honestly, like, ignoring Tasha's for a moment. Ignoring Tasha's for a moment, it should have been something that you do at the start of each day. It should have been something that you do at the start of each day. <laughs> Fuck. I'm, not, I'm gonna get rid of one one mode at this rate. Fucking Jesus, Juan. Um, but, like, uh, like... The, the ranger starts the day one, and they're just kind of like, it should, it should be like, once a long rest, you get to pick what your favorite enemy is for that day one. And then it's like, the ranger wakes up, it's like, you know what, I feel like saying a racial slur against the fae today one. And, you know, then fae is their, is their favorite enemy, and then that's the thing. But favored foe is our, unironically, just a better version of this one. Um, 
When you hit a creature with an attack roll, one, you can call upon your mystical bomb with nature to mark a target as your favorite enemy for one minute or until you lose concentration as if you were concentrating on a spell, one. The first time, first time on each of your turns, you hit the favorite enemy and deal damage to it, including when you mark it, you can increase that damage by 1d4, one. You can use this feature to mark a favorite enemy a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you can regain all extended uses when you finish a long rest, one. This feature's extra damage increases when you reach uh, certain levels. 1d6 at 6th level, and 1d8 at 14th level 1. So, like, it is honestly pretty decent. Like, it is, it's, it's honestly pretty decent one. Like, it's like, it's no longer, it's no longer just like a blanket across the way, oh, I fucking ate noifies. Now it's like, now it's like your your ranger just kind of has just like a Rolodex of slurs in their fucking in their fucking in their brain, and it's like, hey, that guy's a fucking hill giant. Fuck you, you hill living bitch, and you they they take one d four extra racism damage. Hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, natural explorer and deft explorer. Um. You're particularly familiar with one type of natural environment and adept at traveling such regions. Was it one type of favored terrain? Arctic, coast, desert, forest, greenland, mountain, swamp, or underdark? When you make a wisdom or intelligence check with your favorite terrain one, your proficiency bonus is doubled using a skill you're proficient in one. Fucking useless one! Difficult terrain doesn't... If you're traveling for an hour or more in your favorite terrain one, you gain the following benefits. Difficult terrain doesn't slow your group. Your group can't be become lost except by magical means one. Even when you're engaged in another activity such as traveling, such as foraging, navigating, or tracking, you can remain alert to danger. If you're traveling alone, you can move stealthily at normal pace one. When you forage, you can find twice as much food as you normally would one. When tracking other creatures, you also learn the exact number, their size, and how long ago they passed through the area one. So, if you're playing in, like, Icewind Dale, where, like, it's all fucking snow all the fucking time, this is a really good ability. But if you're going anywhere that has a fucking difference in biomes, if the, if the ranger starts playing Minecraft, the moment you leave the forest or the plains or whatever the fuck you, you're, you're good with, this is shit. This is only good in one campaign. It's not even good in Escape from Abyss, because part of Escape from Abyss happens on the surface. Meaning if you take favored, favored terrain Underdark, which by the way, once again requires metagaming, like, like for like half the campaign, you're, you're, it's useless. Uh, and then we got Deft Explorer. If you're an you are an unsurpassed explorer and survivor, both the wilderness and dealing with other classes on your with others on your travels. You gain the canny benefit, and you gain additional benefit below when you reach sixth level and tenth level. I don't have anything to drink, Moira. Stop, stop banking the sippies. Choose one of your skill proficiencies. Your proficiency bonus is double for any ability check you you make that uses the chosen skill. You also read, write. Read, speak, read, and write two additional languages of your choice. So just, instead of just like, oh yes, when you're in the jungle, you get a benefit to any fucking skill. Instead, it's just, you have, you have, uh, functional expertise in two skills at all times. Because you're a good explorer. Like, that is like, Unironically, just like really good, and I, I, and two more languages, yeah. So like I, I think that gave me the two languages. Did it give me the expertise? It gave me expertise in stealth, but not. Okay, that's weird. It gave me the expertise in. Hmm. <laughs> So we're going to get rid of that. And we're going to get rid of that. Choose one, oh, choose one of your skill proficiencies. And then, I, I, did it, it didn't, I don't think it gave me, oh, maybe it did, maybe Elvish and Sylvan are those two extra languages. Okay, fair enough. I wish language played a bit of a bigger role. Um, yeah, honestly, same. 
I'm gonna be honest, I think languages, they can play a big part, but literally your DM needs to go out of their way to do it. Like, I, I find that languages play a lot more of a, um, a lot more of a, of an impact when it comes to written shit, you know? Moira! Her mum is an elf! Of course she's gonna learn the elf languages! Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, so, oh fuck, they get blind fighting from Tasha's? Holy shit. Imagine the Strahd campaign, but Strahd speaks a long dead language, none of the party understands. That'd be fucking cool, actually. Um, yeah, so, uh, second level you pick a fighting style. Fighting style is basically just, like, what your range is good at doing, fighting-wise. Uh, so, let's see, blind, blind sight. Honestly, being able to fight even while blind is really fucking good. I know it's only a ten-foot range, but, like... Always being able to see 10 feet away from you is, like, really underrated. It's honestly really, really underrated, especially if you're fighting, fighting something that can go fucking invisible. Um, you learn two cantrips from the druid spell list. That's pretty neat. Uh, thrown weapon fight. Like, honestly, the idea of a ranger fighting entirely with fucking throwing knives is honestly pretty neat. But when will that come up? Um, so, Blindsight, okay, here we go, so, Blindsight is really good because, so, Halfling, do Halflings have dark vision? I don't think they do. No, they do not. So, okay, so, if you, it pairs really, really well with dark vision, but, um, it can still work here. Essentially, if you're fighting in... Uh, dim light, and you don't have dark vision, or if you're fighting in darkness, uh, and you do have dark vision, uh, you have disadvantage on your attacks. So, essentially because it's hard to see. So, but with blind sight, so long as you're within 10 feet of whatever you're fighting, you do, you can attack normally. Because you know where they are, because you can see regardless. So, one of the... And I think Blindsight can actually go... Ignores Magical Darkness. Yeah. Yeah, Blindsight ignores Magical Darkness. So one of the things that you could do... If you, could, if you played an Eldritch Knight... If you played an Eldritch Knight... You could run up to somebody... Cast Darkness... Centered on yourself... And then everything within that Cloud of Darkness... Ca has disadvantage to hit you. Because they're attacking you in Magical Darkness, and so long as they stay within 10 feet of you, and I believe the radius for Magical Darkness is not actually that big. Hang on, um... Fuck, I... Yeah, like... Like, I think, I think the radius for Magical Darkness is like 30 feet. So... Like, literally anything within 10 feet of you, uh, you can attack no problem. And if, it, and if it's centered on you, it doesn't fucking matter, yeah. So 20 feet around you. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. So the only, so like, dark, your darkness, your own darkness only affects you if you, from um, 20, in, like, for, for functionally 20 feet past where you're at. So if you know where everyone is, where every one of the creatures is, you run up to them as, a, as an eldritch knight. You drop, uh, darkness centered on yourself. And I don't know, can you attach darkness to an object like you can light? I don't know. Yeah. And you... Like, you, and you just... Blind sight, ten feet, you can just fuck people up. Say so is correct, combine it with trap spells, yeah, like... Like, everything in that, the you know, everything in that cloud of darkness has disadvantage I think it has disadvantage if it has dark vision, and it can't attack you at all, or it can swing blindly, which is a dice roll for them, because the DM basically has to have them roll a dice and pick a square that corresponds with that dice. Or at least that's the rules that uh, I generally use. Um, and yeah, combine that with disadvantage if they attack anyone but you, yeah, also, yeah. Like, it's honestly, like, if you, if everybody in the party has a way to see through magical darkness, like, so Devil Sight, or... Um, or fairy fire, because I believe fairy fire highlights 
enemies, like, with, like, a targeting display kind of thing, almost. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you can risk going prone if you really fuck up, yeah. Point being, blind fighting is really fucking good. Especially if you have the right, like, party composition for it. Um, spell casting. Uh, you know, two first level spells of your choice on the ranger spell list. Uh, I don't think it actually let me pick my spells, so let's do that. Oh, um... Okay, so actually, so, okay, so hit. So here's another thing that, by the way, that Tasha added that made Ranger actually really good. So uh, in D and D five e, a spell casting focus allows you to ignore any material component for your spell that does not have a gold cost, or or, or yet yeah, or or is or is or is not consumed. So um, yeah, this is really good because before. What rangers would need to do, so let's see, how many spells do I have? At level 3, I've got first level spells, I've got 3 of them. No, actually, I might have more, actually, hang on. Um, when you gain level, you can choose one of the another spells in the spell list, which must be a level which you have spell slots. Uh, wait, do I only know 2? Oh, wait, is it, wait, hang on. Oh, spells known. Okay, I'm, look, I'm blind as shit, alright? I'm blind as shit. So I, I know three spells. I know three spells. So let's go in. Spells. And I'm going to add Grim Hollow because that's what we allow at our table. Issue materials, yeah. So, let's look at some of the ranger spells for first level, shall we? Alright, so... Um... This is concentration. Yeah. Uh, so let's go... Okay, so Beast Bond. So, in order to cast Beast Bond, which is not, like, a super amazing spell, but, like... Like, it allows you to talk with your... It allows you to talk with your, um, with your beast companion, which... Yeah! Which is not bad. Um, but I'm already telepathic, so... It's not super useful. In order to use this spell, I would need to be carrying around a bit of animal fur wrapped around in cloth. Just random fucking useless tat. And then to cast the spell, I would need to reach into my pocket, pull it out, cast the spell, and then put it back... Like, which, by the way, would consume an action. So, like, literally, I'm holding... So, like, literally, I pull out the thing. Pulling out an item is, is a... Is an... Ah! Is an object interaction. But, um... <laughs> and then putting it away, though, would use an action. So you have to hold this thing in your fucking hand, cast the spell, and then wait till next turn to put it away. Like, it's, it's bullshit, so, but, like, being able to have a druidic focus uh, is honestly something that is really, really useful, because a druidic focus uh, can be a sprig of mistletoe, um, a sprig of holly, a wand, a rod made of you. So, fun thing, if you're playing... So, if this is something that I allow, I would not... I would not try this at every table, I would ask first. Technically... If you have a bow, and it's made of you, you could use your bow as a spellcasting focus. As a DM, I would allow that. I know that, that, I know that some DMs wouldn't, because it's like, well, hey, what the fuck? But there's, all, there's plenty of ways around like having your spell focus have to be something you have to pull out. Um, I knew one person who, uh, they were playing a sorcerer, and they had an... Uh, Amulet spell focus. So, I think rules are written that wouldn't work because a bow has his own. That's the fun thing about D and D. I see. Fucking, there's no rules as written for this shit. Literally, the book says, "Ah, DM figure it out." And that's why I fucking hate Five E because it allows like rules lawyers like she who shall not be named 
to make our lives hell by arguing with us over every little piece of minutia. Yeah. But yeah, I knew a sorcerer who... Yeah. Like, I knew a sorcerer who had an amulet uh, spell focus, and he wanted to be able to... like, And then he had his hands full, and, he, and he's like, oh shit, what do I do? Uh, so he couldn't cast any spells, because he had, like, a torch in one hand, and he had something else, I don't remember what, it was important, so he couldn't put it down in his other hand, so he couldn't cast his spell. After that fight, what he did was, is he went to a jeweler's, and he converted the, the amulet into a, into, a, into a glove. Basically built the amulet into the back of the glove, so technically, he's always holding his spell focus, so he can just, so even if he's got something in his hand, he can just go, whoosh, and it works. Like, and, and before you fucking say anything, that is the exact same logic that allows clerics to put their holy symbols on their shields. Like... Can we truly hold the glove? I will fucking kill you, you fucking horse. Um... And then, of course, we've got Ranger Archetype. But yeah, like, but point being, uh, this, like, literally makes Rangers be able to cast spells. Used to be that if you were a Ranger and you wanted to cast spells, like, fucking good fucking luck, my man. Good fucking luck. I, I want to also say that I am... I also want to say that I, I am joking. Icy has been my friend for ages. I can, I'm, allowed, I'm allowed to say that, unless Icy says I can't. Um... Rules is written, clerics must have the war cast defeat. Yeah, but they don't, do they? At least not according to Solasta. Uh, Beastmaster. Uh, -de -boo. Get rangers. Can choose a beast is no larger than medium, has a chance rating of one fourth or lower. Tressim! Oh, wait, what does a Tressim count as? What the fuck? Oh, uh, Tresim is like fucking challenge rating zero. <laughs> Honestly, what I would what I would say is that to just like have it be like a different. Okay, why does a Tresim not? Oh, because it counts as a fucking monstrosity. That's dumb. You know what? I'm gonna rule it. I like me as a DM. I'd rule this aloud. Fuck you. Uh, add your proficiency to the beast's AC, attack rolls, and damage rolls, as well as the same saving throws. Is it point maximum? Is it his normal maximum or four times your ranger level, whichever is higher? Like any creature, your beast is going hit dice. Um, yeah. So. Druid should be able to turn into owl bears. Thank you. I would let. I would let them. Yeah, I. I feel. I think that uh, the tressim would need to be. I feel like like if you're gonna have a tressim as a as a beastmaster pet, you would need to. Uh, yeah, you would need to fuck with it, like like restat it somehow. Because, like, this is a Tressim the size of a halfling. Wizards of the Coast are afraid of giving beast class enemies anything of value because of Druid would have it. But yeah, like, I mean, like, this is part of the issue of, um, of Beastmasters. They're like, look at, look, look at what I have to pick from here. 1d4 plus 3. Um, add your proficiency bonus to the beast's AC attack rolls and damage rolls. So, like, if I had this, if I had a Tressim, I would be doing, uh, at level 3, what is my proficiency bonus? 3. I, so it'd be doing 4 damage. Yeah, like, this is, the, like, like, I feel like this is still something you kind of need to fuck with a little bit. Oh, we got, pri wait, we got Primal Companion, hang on. You magically summon a primal beast, which draws the strength from your bond with nature. This beast is friendly to you, and you have you and your companions and obeys your commands. Choose its stat block, beast of land, beast of sea, beast of sky, which uses your proficiency bonus in several places. 
Let's see, what, let, let's see these. Hit points five times. Interesting. 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 Okay, so once again, Tasha's just fucking fixes it. Yeah, yeah, so it turns out Wizards of the Coast has, like, their own set of rules that they just keep in the back away from the fucking peasants. Yeah, once again, by the way... Tasha's Cauldron fixes Ranger. Because this is garbage. But this is actually pretty decent. It's a genericized stat block, yes, but it's fucking better than whatever fucking garbage I'd have here. I could literally pick uh, Beast of the... Oh, shit. Shit and fart. I could literally pick Primal Companion, go Beast of the Sky, and fucking have a Tressum. Yeah, fucking... See, here I was worrying, it's like, oh man, I'm gonna have to, like, restat this, I'm gonna have to do this, like, fucking no, just... Use Tasha's! One D takes six of Beast of Land Sky, see, makes it on the option for the Druid. Yeah, see, that's bullshit. One D&D is bullshit, and I will not be playing it. Well, Wizards HP? No, Wizards actually have less HP now. I don't actually, I haven't released Wizard yet, and I don't want to look. I do not want to look, because I'm not going to be playing it. Yeah. Fucking, uh... But yeah, like, un unironically, just fucking, like, Wizards. Like, Wizards of the Coast fucking fucked up, fucked up making Rangers so bad the first time around. My god. Uh, the beast dies within the last hour. You can use your action to touch it because it's still at first level or higher. The beast turns to life one minute. Oh shit, that's- So if your beast dies in combat, you can just fucking bring it back to- Holy shit! Because I'm pretty sure if, like, the an the baseline animal companion dies, you have to go tame another one. That is insanely good! Holy shit! Primeval Awareness. Uh, beginning of third level, you can use your action to spend one ranger spell slot to focus your awareness on the region around you for one minute per level per spell slot you expend. You can sense whether the following types of creatures are present within one mile of you, up to within then and uh, aberrations. So if this feature doesn't reveal their location or number, then what is the fucking point? What is the point of this? Like, hey, yeah, I would like to spend one of my spell slots, of which I have only three... Uh, and I want to know if there's any fey around. Yes, there are fey around. Can you tell me where they are? No. What is the point of this? Uh, primal Awareness. You can focus your awareness of the interconnections of nature. You learn additional spells and you reach certain levels in this class if you don't already know them, as shown in the Primal Awareness spells table. These spells do not count against the number of stranger spells you know. Speak with animals! Just for free, you get speak with animals. Oh my fuck! Yeah, like, holy shit, I think they should just, like, when... Like, oh my god, like, they should just, like, put out, like, a thing of just, like, hey, yo, uh, if you, if you, ha if you, uh, want to play a ranger, just fucking, here's Tasha. They just put Tasha's out for free. Yeah, and it's a ritual as well. Oh my god, that is just so fucking bad, bro. Like, like, bit, like, original Ranger is so fucking bad, it shouldn't even bother importing this when I fucking put it through fucking, uh, the importer. Does Ranger get ritual casting? Uh, no, they do not. But let's be honest, speak, being able to speak with animals for, for basically free is pretty good. Okay, let's pick our three spells. Let's pick our three spells, shall we? So, like, we're gonna be using our animal companion a lot, so I don't think this is really- So essentially, like, what we're gonna pick, we're gonna pick spells that are more supporty. 
Uh, because we're not gonna- because we have our bow, we have archery, we have our animal companion. We don't really need... <laughs> yeah, like... Like, I don't- we don't really need our spells, so... Uh, assisted aim? Uh, you invigorate up to three creatures within range with improved accuracy. Each targeted creature gains a plus one to hit for all ranged weapons they take. By the way, this one is, uh, this one is third party, so this one is, uh, Grim Hollow. Uh, additionally, targeted creatures may double the normal and long range of weapons they are wielding. I'm gonna take that. Uh, I'm going to take... I mean, I'm already telepathic, so I don't think I need be spawned. Uh, we're going to take Cure Wounds, because Cure Wounds is always useful. And we're going to take... Gonna take Goodberry, because Goodberry is always good, because tracking rations is dumb. Uh, wizards... Hey, guess what? D&D is not super great. Like, fucking... D&D is only good because people, cause people make it good. You good? I keep, like, my br I turn around and my brain autofills where your hair used to be. Like, I hate that. I hate that. I know, like, cause you, my, you, the brain just autofills shit when it doesn't see it. Uh, what are you up to? I am about to go do this. Alright, have fun. Uh, the dishwasher is empty, or at least barely, the dishwasher's got dirty stuff in it if you just want to put it in the dishwasher. Yeah. Alright. Uh, I'm not playing with her anymore. They are duct taping parts from Pathfinder 2 into D&D with one D&D and massively nerfing spellcasters. That is very, very OP. Uh, I would disagree. I would say that marshals are dummy fucking strong. It's just that a lot of people don't really know... A lot of players don't know how to play marshals, and a lot of DMs don't know how to, like, balance around marshals, you know? Like... How to shut down a spellcaster and make marshals just kind of fuck every fuck things up. Uh counterspell. Give counterspell to your to your enemies. You know? Like it's not so much a matter of like, oh man, marshals aren't aren't marshals aren't uh strong. It's more that like nobody ever uses the counters. I mean, I use using it as an example. I was making using it as an example, I see. Live salty because the barbaric. Shut the fuck up. Like, yeah, like there's there's like a lot of things that are very easy to use that you can use to counter marshals. There's a lot of things you can use to counter spellcasters as well. But the thing is, nobody ever fucking uses them. All right, uh, let's go with background. All right, so okay, so so Gwen was a orphan who was adopted by Mal uh, along with her brother. She died, like she actually died. Actually, like she got sacrificed, uh, and my uh, drow, uh, my drow soul, soul knife. Watching her fucking, like, blood just fucking flow out onto the sacrifice table. Um, panicked, and grabbed this child as it was bleeding out, and just fucking sprinted through the streets of Waterdeep to take it to a, um, to take it to a temple, and just dropped a fucking sack of fucking coins, like, in front of the cleric, and went, Fix it! 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 Um, to bring her back to life. So she has died. And because she was sacrificed by a cult, she did go to hell. Like, she unironically went to hell. Yeah, fix the child, it broke. Yeah, so, uh, that, uh, the rest of the party is not super happy with me about that, though. Because, um, they had to fight the cult leader by themselves. But... Mal knows what a resurrection spell is. She Mal grew up in a temple of Lolth. She knows what Revivify does. She's seen it used. Though it was usually to revive people so they could be tortured more. But, you know, she realized she knows the she recognizes the mechanic. 
Um, uh, and she knows that it takes that like uh, it has to be done within like a uh, within a minute. Luckily, she's fast as fuck, and has like a lot of movement speed. Um, so I'm thinking haunted one. Haunted one might be a good idea. You are right there. Let's read it. Where is uh haunted one? Uh, Features a bit edgy. You let people look in your eyes and see you face unimaginable horror and no longer no stranger to darkness that they might still fear you. Calm, they might fear you. Commoners will extend every courtesy to do to help you. Unless you're saying you should be a danger, they take up arms about alongside you. Honestly, that's kind of funny. That's kind of funny. Unironically, because like in my mind, like she's just like this innocent pure being. She's this innocent, pure being that has uh, unresolved childhood PTSD that she resolves by, by being an adventurer and just taking a lot of joy in fighting. Yeah, I think I'm going to take this. I think I'm going to take Haunted One. So we're going to go Import. Heart of Darkness. Uh, customize my skill selection. And... I will use the defaults. That's fine. Uh, let's go with Arcana, and... Hmm. Arcana, and... There's a lot of int stuff here. Uh, I think we already have survival, do we not? No, we do not have survival, actually. That would be a smart thing to take, actually, to take survival, because tracking. Uh, we like to customize our language and tool selection. We'll use the default, thank you. Uh... So we get proficiency. Well, you might as well take proficiency at Undercommon because it uses, like, Drow script, so might as well do that. And we'll take a proficiency in... Take proficiency in... Is there any other Elvish scripts? Um, let's just take Dwarvish, because, uh, there's a lot of dwarves in, uh, there's a lot of dwarves in, uh, in Waterdeep, so that makes sense. Marie Condit, holding up brass knuckles, this one sparks joy. Yeah. Like, it's the kind of, okay, so, like, my mental image for this character is this, like, precious little, sweet little halfling, halfling girl, um, who's, like, ever so polite, ever so nice, she's been taught well by her, by her family, her adopted family, she's had a nice childhood, but she's haunted by nightmares of when she was in hell. And when she, and like, and you know, she has, you know, that's just a thing. Doesn't sleep very well. She's got like bags under her eyes. And then like, whenever she gets into a fight, it's like, <laughs> yeah, let's go. Woo! Like basically like she's just having fun. And like, and just kind of like cackling madly and just going fucking bananas over it. Um... Let's see, uh, I never accept them out of my depth, I must know the answer to every secret, let people underestimate me. I think that, I think this is, this is based right here. I let people underestimate me, revealing my full competency only to those close to me. Uh, doesn't matter the whole world's against me, I always do what I think is right, I have morbid interest in a macabre aesthetic, a personal ritual, my, oh my god, pastel goth! She's a fucking pastel goth! A poopa! Wait, is it buffering? Oh, she did. Uh, I'm easily startled, but I'm not a coward. I think easily startled, but not a coward is a good thing for the sec- for the- for the other one, so we'll do that one. Ideals! What do we got for ideals? Adrenaline. I've experienced such strange, and I feel only alive in extreme situ- oh, I mean, that's basically what I described. Uh, balance. I started to count the deeds of someone who I feel responsible. I've wronged someone. Escape. Uh, legacy... Uh, misdirection... I work for to keep up the reserve... Uh, no... Mm. But I still don't have anything to drink! Fuck! Stop it! Uh, and you're also making me jump, holy shit! Uh... 
<laughs> uh, care about the truth above all else? Let's go with adrenaline. Horror bonds. Does I need to get back? No. Everything I do in service of a powerful master? No. I owe much of my vanished mentor? No. I've seen great darkness, but I've committed to being a light against it. I like that one. I think that one works a lot, but... Um... Flaw. I believe doom follows me. I'm convinced that something is after me. I'm especially superstitious. I've done unspeakable evil. No. I'm especially credulous and believe any story immediately. No. I'm a skeptic and no. no. I know my future is written. No. I need the best be. No. I've seen the evil type of place like forest. Caesar graveyards. I mean, she's been to hell, so. I think I'm gonna go with. I've seen. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm gonna go with this. I'm gonna get a migraine. <laughs> Fine. Let's. F okay, let me finish this sheet. Let me finish this sheet, and then we, and then I will go, and I will, I will get something to drink, okay? Alright. So, I, honestly, I really like, uh, how this is looking, honestly. This is, looks, looks like a really strong, stream is constantly buffering. Is it buffering for anyone other than King? Because it's green across the board for me. Stream is running. King, refresh the page. Perhaps what you should drink is the water. I will fight you. Alright, so... This is honestly uh, a pretty good character. We've got uh, expertise in stealth, we've got survival, nature, arcana. Like, we've got really, like, nothing below 14 except for strength, but we're a ranger, so it's not really that big of a deal. Um, Tasha's ranger changes are, like, really good. Um, we've got, like, a, we got a cool little bit of lore here. We got, like, some decent spells. Like, unironically, this is a really, really cool little thing here. So, now let's bit make it in Pathfinder, shall we? Yeah, yeah, King, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a problem on your end. I'm sorry, I don't really, I can't really do anything about your connection. Um, let's build in Path Builder. But I will go, but I need to pee anyway, so I'll, so I'll go and... I'll go pee, I'll get something to drink, and I will return, okay?
Okay, I'm back and I have water. Are you happy now? Jesus. Mm. Oh, fuck you. Alright, fine. Another shippy. Reloading piss. Okay, and I drank, I drank them on my way up the stairs. Alright, shut up. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Now let's make this halfling. So... Ancestry, halfling, except. So, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and make the same character for both settings, and we're going to uh, work from there and just see what we can do shoes. here. No, they're mine! Uh, b -b 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 class, we want a ranger. All right. So let's go background first. I know we did it before, but we did it, we did it last last time, but let's do it here. Are you going to boop the beans? <gasps> you cannot boop the beans. That's illegal. Oh, uh, boy. Did I actually advertise this stream on Twitter? I don't actually remember if I did. Smoosh the pad. Maybe zoom in. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh... I'm hoping that that works and you guys can see. Is that, is that, is that visible? It is? Okay. Here's a TJ where you on the side, you still have one shot. Yeah! You mean what? I mean, I mean, I know you've got your, you're, you're kind of having an issue because you're in 480, but... All right, so we want something to fit haunted one. So, Let's see how long have we been going? Okay, I've got so I've got like another another hour, and then I gotta go. So we might only be able to do this one character, which is unfortunate. But outcast, bright lion, charlatan, charmer, child of squalor, child of the city, chosen one, chosen one. Mm, circus born. There's so many fucking backgrounds here. My god. It's actually kind of insane. 
There is a haunted back. Is there? Um, I think I went past it. Oh, haunted. Fuck. Okay. You're followed by a spirit or entity, either from childhood or since a traumatic or momentous event. You may have seen this entity. Others may have seen it as well. You have studied esoteric subjects trying to understand your situation, but its presence in life remains a mystery. I don't think this fits. Because she's not haunted as in, like, haunted by a ghost. She's haunted as in haunted by nightmares of that time she died and went to hell. Is there one that- there's one that's, uh, if you died, right? Like, returned or something? I think I've seen that. I'm gonna PQR... Reborn soul, reclaimed, reclaimer, recruiter, reformer, refugee, refugee, reputation seeker, returned. You died and miraculously returned with knowledge of the realms beyond death and a stronger link to life. Some dead and undead souls might feel a strange instinctual kinship with you. Yes, no, this is exactly it. Yeah, no, we're gonna take that. There's like 10 for I died. Is there one for being sacrificed? Like being sacrificed and coming back? Or like one that would work there? Because I, I don't, I'm going to be honest, I do not know this system nearly as well as I... So she can make skeleton for- Yes! There's only one person who can crack the nouveau. It's schizophrenic trans woman who goes, but what the fuck? Alright, based? Based? But yeah, like, uh, I see. If there's one that, like, for someone who's been sacrificed and came back, then, like, straight up, let me know. Like, there's so fucking many, and I don't think I can... Mm. Looking? Alright, I'm gonna leave it at- I'm gonna leave it as returned for now, and we're gonna go from there. Uh, so... We're gonna start at level- we're gonna stick with level 1 here because, uh, I have only ever played Pathfinder up to level 2. So, I do not actually know how Pathfinder goes from here on out, so uh, we're only gonna go to level 1. Alright. So, we're gonna do the abilities and training last. Let's get the heritage. Heritage! Gutsy, Hillock, Nomadic, Observant, Twilight. Uh, well, let's start with the commons first, then we'll look at the all heritages and see what there is. Uh, Gutsy. Your family nine is known for keeping a level head and staving off fear. Custom of calm life on the hills. They find rest and relaxation when replenishing. No. Nomadic. No. Observant. No. Twilight. No. Yeah, like, one thing I'll say here is the, the common ancestries are generally not super great. I've noticed. They're all very, like, ho-hum, and I wonder if it's because they were the first ones that they put in the game, or if they're intended to, like, not give too much of an impact on, um, on, 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 on gameplay. You know, like, the first people who are new and don't want to keep track of too many things. Mm hmm Asimar, Aphorite, Beastkin, Changeling, Dampier, Duskwalker? Uh, Gonzi, Jinx, Halfling. Uncommon required. Yeah, that's true. Mm, reflection, Suli. Uh, self, Tiefling, Twilight, Undyne, Wildwood, Duskwalker, Dampier, Changeling, Beastkin, Aphorite, Asimar. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest. Because she died and went to hell, I'm kind of tempted to just give it the give her the tiefling heritage. If only so that like to kind of cuz like getting sacrificed by a devil worshiping cult, going to hell and coming back, that's gonna fuck with you a little bit. That's gonna fuck you up just a tiny bit. I'm tempted to go for the tiefling heritage, just because, like, I don't really see anything here that really fits, 
like what I have in mind. It does lose out on the t we do. There's nothing here that gives telepathy that I can see here. So, I'm gonna grab the tiefling and just see how that works. Or maybe we can go for jinxed halfling. Actually, you're born with a strange blessing, bereft of typical halfling luck. You can instead manipulate the fortune of others. You can never take halfling luck, and you gain the jinx action. Hmm. Telepathy is is higher level. Yeah, like. She just gets it later. Okay, you know, I'm gonna roll a dice. I'm gonna roll a dice. I've still got my d6s out. If we get an even number, we will go for tiefling. If we get an odd number, we'll go for jinx. Uh, that is odd, so jinx it is. Used up all your luck by, f getting, a, by getting adopted by a parent who would get out of her way to fucking resurrect you. Congrats, Stinky. Used up all your luck, dum-dum. Uh, you could take the halfling nut. No, I can't. I cannot take that. Uh, let's see. Uh, you fit it with knots, locks, and... That is true. That is extremely lucky. Like, like the person who adopted you has already adopted your brother and walks in the room right as you fucking get your throat slit, and then she grabs you and runs to the local fucking cleric who resurrects you right before your time would have been up and you would not be able to be resurrected. I know in, like, Pathfinder, um, like, you have, like, a... You can be resurrected within a year. I know that's a thing. Versus in D&D, &D, where it has to be within the first minute or you have to use a higher-level spell slot, which is, like, a lot more expensive as well. But, like, still, death is death. And death is a problem. Um, back. Fucking, alright, another sip. Gee, are you just doing that on fucking cooldown? My god. Yeah, Path and Resurrection is really expensive. That's true. It's not just 300 fucking gold, yeah. Uh... Halfling lore, halfling weapon familiarity, innocuous, sure feet, titan slinger, unassuming dedication, unfettered, watchful. I think okay. Let's say what this what this sh uh, shadow one is. You've learned to remain hidden by using larger focus as distraction and avoid drawing attention to yourself. You can use creatures that are at least one size bigger than you as cover for the hide and seek sneak actions, so you still can't use such creatures for as cover for other use, such as the take cover. <laughs> you can't use you can't use the fucking the, the fighter as a as half cover, you fucking stinky idiot. Hmm. Yeah, let's take distracting shadows. Okay, class feet. Animal companion? You know what? Yeah, animal companion. We're gonna take animal- Because we're already a beast master, we might as well take animal companion. Edge! Flurry. Uh, when you- you're, Okay. You're trained to unleash a devastating flurry of attacks on your prey. Your multiple attack penalty for his hunt is negative three, negative two with an agile weapon. On your second attack, instead of negative five, negative six. On your third, instead of negative ten. That is really good! Holy shit! I'm gonna take flurry. That's just- I don't even want to look at the other ones. That's just really good. Be being able to use more attacks? Like, fuck. You, what, you always do hide and cooldown? Why is this surprising? I'm gonna make that cooldown longer. Empty Whispers background. Alright, let's have a look at this. Uh, Shkabingis. You knew someone once, and now you know only a life stitched together and healed over, now you're a scar remaining. You hear voices of souls that have fallen through cracks in reality, creatures who have been removed from memory, banished planner entities, and similar. Their whispers guide you. I... I'm not super down for that. Yeah, no, that one can stay. That one can stay. Yeah, we're gonna stay at Returned. It's more explicitly like, hey, yo, I fucking died, Lamau. Uh, alright, so we're gonna go for... Hmm. So we do still need strength, right? Like, strength is not a dump stat for rangers here. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna go with... So if I don't give strength, that's a 12. 
So we're going to add to int. We're going to add some whiz. We're going to add a little bit of strongs. Actually, we should probably go for constitution, actually. How dare you, for one. Yeah, I think I think ten strength is enough. Cause if we're going, cause like if we're going sneaky, we only really want to wear light armor anyway, and like light armor only requires ten strength. Dex weapons in P two PF two E will reduce suck a bit because you don't add dex to your damage. I mean that's what flurry is for. I can make up for the fact I'm not adding dex to my damage by just making more attacks. Yeah, ten means no negatives. Yeah, so if we go... If we just, like, pump our con here, uh, pump our con here, we can get uh, 14 con, 14 dex, and then 10s across the board, basically, which is not amazing, but... So was there DC? What do you mean DC? You mean AC? Okay, oh, and I get my free boost anyway, so we're gonna put a bit into Dex, we're gonna put a bit into Con, we're gonna put a bit into Wisdom, we're gonna put a bit into Charisma. So this is what we were talking about earlier, about um, Pathfinder not having as much dice work, uh, in that, like, making your characters about applying boosts more so than is rolling dice. AC is dex, but modifiers you get from other stuff from whatever. Yeah, exactly. What? What, Myra? Yeah, like, we don't need strength. Strength is for babies. Finished. Monk who explicitly doesn't dodge anything, she just tanks it on her abs. Oh my god. That would unironically be the coolest fucking thing. That would unironically be the coolest fucking bit of flavor. Just like, oh god. Like that fucking death by snoo snoo fucking meme. Death by snoo snoo. Alright, skill trainings. That's literally your null, hell yeah. All right, um, let's take a bit in acrobatics. Let's take a bit in crafting, because we're going to need to make arrows, I imagine. Let's take some stealth. Fucking plus six to stealth? I'll fucking take that. Uh, let's take a bit in thievery. Scubingus. That's not bad. <laughs> the other joke is her flurry is one. It just feels like ten. Oh, that's amazing. By not being trained plus one. Trained plus twelve, yeah. Uh, god, this is... Unironically, I'm actually really liking how this is turning out. Hell yeah. Alright, uh, I'll just add some gear. Adventurer's pack, because that's basically mandatory. Bite. And bite. Gives us bedroll. Backpack, cool. And... <sighs> We're gonna want some arrows, and we're gonna want some gear, so let's get some armor. So, light armor, let's get a leather armor. Scabingus. And let's grab a bow. Can a halfling use a longbow here, or no? <laughs> also nine feet tall and a hunt and one thousand one hundred got mommy 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 uh long bow five foot tall bow we made of a single piece of elm hickory or use powerful drum propelling arrows great force great scissors use two hands fire long bow can be used by a mountain just use a halfling sized bow fair enough Mind the volley trait? Oh, that's true, right, yeah, there's a fucking uh, minimum distance here. Right, forgot about that. Well, we can always just buy some- we can always just buy a short sword. Okay, I have to leave Need sleep for work tomorrow. It was nice hanging out and chill. Good night, Liv.
Good night, King. Have a good, have a good sleeps. All right, let's buy a longbow. And let's buy some, uh, let's buy, let's buy something to, let's buy, buy let's buy something to, uh, to, to, to fight with in melee, shall we? Uh, let's buy a... Bow staff? Wait. Uh, the bow staff is a retracting spool of wire set of metal cap- Oh, yo! A wielder trained in weapons use can quickly spool and attach or detach the wire to transition the weapon between bow and staff. Fuck! That's really cool. I ah oh, shit, shit and fired. I cannot afford this item. How much is it? It's eight gold pieces. Fuck. How much was this longbow? The melee is non-lethal. I mean, I'm trained in it though. It doesn't need to. I mean, I'm trained in it though. I can use it. Yeah, see, I'm trained in it, so, like... You know what, we'll, 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 we'll say otherwise. How, though? I, I don't know, it just says I am. I'm going to trust Path Builder a little bit. But, let, I, I don't know how, I, you know what... Bow staff is something that she'll get later on, because it's only a d6 and a d8 as a bow, so... Oh, wait, no, it's not even d8, it's a d8 on a crit, so... Yeah, so it's... So let's, let's not get that right now, let's just get a... So, I mean, we're gonna take this Elden Curve Blade. Uh, because her mother was an elf, so of course she'd know how to use it, so fuck it. And how much money do we have? We got one gold. Let's buy some arrows. Arrows. Buy. And accept. Ten arrows. And buy another set of arrows. Yeah, uncommon is implied permission to the demon. There's no reason to ban it. Yeah, like uh, me as a Pathfinder Society. Well, Pathfinder Society is basically Pathfinder Adventurer League, right? And since when did we ever pay attention to what the fuck Adventurers League had to say? Adventurers League banned Artificer for fucking years because 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 like fucking oh we don't run in Eberron. Nyum, 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 nyum. Fuck off on that one. But yeah, like, I am really liking how this is going, actually. This is actually pretty neat. Um, I don't think the ranger gets spells here, so we don't have to worry about that, I'm pretty sure. But I'm going to change the name to Gwen Icker. Oh, Ickerd? That's pretty, that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good, man. Uh, save local. Yep. Uh, open character. Okay, so all my characters are actually saved. Neat. Oh, I do get spells. How do I know how many spells I get? As a ranger, you get spells from feats and run from the focus pool. Okay. I have one. Where does it say that? Question. Where does it say how many spells I have at level 1? Is it- it's a level 1- I imagine I don't get it until like later? 
Double checking. Yeah, like, because it, it says here just add rituals, which is which implies I don't have any spell slots. I got the animal companion. Okay, 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 okay. Well, now we know. Well, now we know. All right. So we've got Gwen. We've got Gwen, but Pathfinder. Let's make her on Hero Forge. Make her on Hero Forge to round out the stream, shall we? But I'm gonna be honest, I'm having a lot of fun just playing TTRPGs in person. I unironically hope that the, um, that VR tabletop thing that I, that I saw on stream, like, the other day, I really hope that turns out to be pretty cool, because playing online is great. You know, it's like, it's it's good to, like, be able to play with people from, like, across the world. But, like, there is very much a part of me that's just kind of like, God, I wish we were in person so I could fucking throw dice at the DM's head right now. You know? Like, there's just, like, that, like... You know, like, there's that part of you that's just kind of like, uh... And also, like, just... It's very easy to zone out when you're playing online, especially if you've got, like, my my brain, where I need, like, six things going at once to keep my brain turned on. Alright. Head. Um. Let's... I think that's a good fate. No, it's a little too narrow, actually. Let's... Is there anything down here I can use? No, there's not. Mm. Yeah, Hero Forge has kind of like a bit of an issue where like its art style's a little not great sometimes. I'm gonna go with noble features, but that that fits, I guess. Your GF made Moira in Hero Forge? Hell yeah! Yeah, it's like, it's a very fable art style, isn't it? Okay, so, let's see. So I, th so she's gonna be a ranger. She's gonna be raised by a very practical woman, but a practical woman who's also a drow, so... We gotta find that, p that, that space between practicality and being extremely fucking extra. Like, this is a contender. Mmm, undercut top knot. No. A high ponytail. Actually, hang on. Give me a... Give me a sec. Oh, well, Zeno, go nine. I talk to you later. Alright, Zeno, have a good sleeps. So I actually do have uh, Mal here. Uh, here we go. She's not colored because I planned on printing her and I don't have a color 3D printer, so. Yeah. So this is Mal. This is, this is the, this is the, the, the drow that adopted her. So she's got like a ponytail. She's like, she's got like, you know, like it's that, it's that like space between practicality and being extra as shit. I really do want to get this printed, but size 3D printer is just, like, very stinky. There's Gwen. Stinky is in resin stinks? No, I- God, I wish we had a resin printer. Now, size got a, uh, a, a PLA printer. Um... And the main issue with it is that the PLA is very, um, temperamental. The last three things from that we've tried to print, uh, like models-wise, uh, or, or, or minis-wise even, I should say, uh, the ankles came out so fucking weak that they just snap off. And it's kind of very frustrating. Because, like, you buy, you, you buy the STL file... You go to print it, and it's like, okay, every time I print it, like, if the fucking ankles break. So you gotta put so much fucking work in 
to 3D print an STL file that you've been told is printer ready. And it's like, bruh, fucking Jesus. I kind of like the idea of her having, like, big, bushy hair. I don't know. Like, I, that idea just kind of, like, speaks to me, actually. We're going to go with this big, wavy ponytail. Like, I, I like the idea that, like, her hair is just, like, very... She's got, like, very big, poofy, long hair. And, like, Mal's just like, All right, when you're going to go murdering, put it up in a ponytail. And she just kind of, like, does it, but doesn't realize that this is not much better. It can help make a full infill, even if it means blowing up half a roll on the print. Yeah, that's true. That's fair. And it really, we really, we just, it's a skill issue. We just gotta learn how to fucking use it, but it's like... Ugh. Teeth, horns, okay, body, alright. These are fine. Okay, it's time for clothing! It's all luck. Yeah, that's true. Alright. So, I don't think we're gonna need a... a helmet. Let's just scroll through them anyway, because I think they've added some new ones. Ah yes, here we go. Real fashion. A hydrate? Fucking, how dare you make me hydrate. Reloading press! Mm -hmm. Boop. Ah, boopa. There was no splashy. There was a splashy. I fucking heard it. Get your printer and climate controlled IKEA box during super slow and super hair time for ability from his bread cooling detach halfway through. <gasps> Brian! Welcome to the stream! Yes! Give me the clicky clacky dices! Yes! They're lagging my stream! Hello, everybody! Welcome to the stream! Hello, I am Liv, the Cyber Doll. I am a doll from the future. I am a variety streamer. I also am trying to get into doing tabletop stuff because I do a lot of tabletop outside of streams. I might as well do an in-stream. We are making a character, the child of- w the adopted child of one of my existing characters. Uh, this is Gwen Ickard, a halfling orphan adopted by a drow. She had a very normal childhood, I promise. Uh, we built her in Pathfinder, and we built her in, uh, 5e. Hello! So now we're just put- now we're just kind of doing her- we're just wrapping up the stream in the last hour by making her in Hero Forge. Uh, let's see. So she's- so I- I don't really know what I want to do for her- uh, for her dress, you know? Like, cause she died. She died, she went to hell, she came back. And and I imagine that's that's definitely because she she gets like nightmares and PTSD and stuff. So like, that's definitely going to like influence her sense of style. Like even if she doesn't recognize that it does, like it will. So let's see. So what would be like the kind of like what would be like the kind of like style of dress that someone like that would have? Like even if they don't recognize they're doing it. Mm, let's go. Let's start with the chest. Actually, let's do the rest of it later. Mercenary leather. Ooh, that's new. Morticia. Yeah, like some Morticia Adams, but Ranger, I guess. Yes, you can. Studded survivor top. So I'm thinking that maybe we want something that's, like, practical but extra. Like I, like I said before, like, she was raised by a drow. A drow assassin, so practicality plus being extra as shit. God, this collar is, like, a little shorter. Maybe. Maybe on that one. More tabletop characters just have a Glock. Very much agreed. Hmm, so like this is the under layer, so let's... Let's... Scroll, keep scrolling a little bit. 
Okay. Including the DM characters. Agreed. All right, so let's go with this for now. This, this here. Let's see what we can put over it and just see what we can make. Uh, blacksmith apron, elven guardian queer, 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 queer? Imagine Curse of Strahd with the final battle of the embassy says she, she's Strahd with gun. Hmm. Oh, like, oh, I like that. That's fucking cool. Wearing a fucking, like, a, like, a cool, like, fucking padded jacket over your fucking, like, breastplate? That's fucking cool. Strahd with an MP40? No, Strahd with a Luger. Okay, do we have any, like, neck pieces that we want? I don't think so. I think, like, neck pieces might be a little bit too much. Yeah, that might be a little too much here. So let's leave that for now. I know exactly what gloves I want. I know exactly what gloves I want. I want, uh, a bolt sleeve, but I only want it on one arm. Can I? Oh, I can do that. Okay, so she's, she's holding the bow. She's right-handed. I rolled for this. She's right-handed. So, holding the bow in this hand, pulling back the arrow with this hand. Oh, I know these are bolts, not, these are crossbow bolts, not arrows. Never mind. She uses a longbow. Never mind. Fuck, that's a dumb idea. Also has minions like Cru crew servant MG. Yeah! That would unironically that would unironically be the best shit. Holy fuck. Oh I forgot okay, fuck, Brian, I'm very sorry. Brian, if you're still here. Fuck, what were you playing? I'm sorry. I forgot to shout you out. I'm sorry, I'm so used to my mods doing it automatically. Why is the shout out not working? That's concerning. You're playing... Oh, I put Brain the Goblin. There we go, you're playing Yakuza 6. Where do all the undead... Uh, what is this? Out? Ryan, what is this in the... Ch what is this? This is, this is a tower it's defense a game? Con. You suck. <laughs> I'm offended. That's hilarious and you suck. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Okay, well, that my, well, my idea for gloves is, is shot. There's, like, a pair of archery gloves that are pretty decent here. I kind of want to grab... Oh, these gauntlets are really cool, though. I think I'm going to grab these gauntlets. These, these, are, these are pretty neat. Legs. Leggies. Elven guardian pants. I mean, she was raised by an elf, so yeah, that makes sense. Over. Mm. I want to give her, like, something, but, like, because of how high the jacket is cropped, it's not, looks like Yakuza to me. Mm, I don't know. I've seen a Yakuza or two in my day. That doesn't look like Yakuza to me. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I I think with these pants plus this top, I don't think we can really do like a like a skirt kind of thing. Yeah, the, that tapper doesn't even really work. Uh, a rope belt. No, just a regular leather belt might just work. It's a little thick, but. Back, padded belt. Fucking bastard with the. Why are you taking turns, fucking splashing me with water? Hmm. Yeah, some of these belts, these belts are just a little too thick. And I understand that's their art style, but like, bruh, fuck. Yeah, we're gonna go with this belt, and we're just not gonna think too hard about it. Oh, fuck, now we gotta get different pants, damn it. I kinda wanted, like, some elven kind of pants to show, like, like her, uh, like, her, her, uh, raising. I guess, for lack of a better term. Something that's, like, practical, but extra as shit. Guess that'll do. That'll do, that's fine. Warrior forgot to click, so you click fair enough. 
Wouldn't be surprised if Yakuza had a mini game. You try and travel to feudal Japan. I mean, there's a fucking Yakuza game that's come out that just is straight up just like set in fucking like feudal Japan. So, and of course, they're going for the healed adventurer boots, like mother, like daughter. If her mother, if her mother could fight in fucking like six inch heels for her entire life and still do, because she's an elf, so therefore she will live forever. Like. Why not? Gear! Alright. So, let's get a longbow. Hmm... Kinda wish that that was... different. Oh, there are different bow poses. Neat. Okay, cool. Um... That's... that's decent. I can work with that. I can work with that. I can work with that. Alright, so... So on her side, we're gonna want... We're gonna want a, uh... Hmm, a grapple go bur- No, stop teasing me with the grapple, you bastard! So we gave her a short sword to work with. So it says put a okay. So wait, okay. Yeah, so right. So wait, why is her right hand holding? What the fuck? That's backwards. That's not how you hold a fucking bow. <sighs> fuck. Whatever. Fuck it. Okay. So whatever. At the very least, the quiver is on the correct side. Fuck. Okay, now let's on the other side put a sheath, uh, sheathed long sword or bro short sword, shall we? That's honestly like I honestly don't need to change too much about that. Um. Actually, I might want to put the sword on her back. Like, it's not the best way to do it, but it's the short sword. The sword is short enough that it shouldn't actually be too much of a problem. So let's just do that. I'm a big fan of um, like uh, like quivers sh like on the um. I'm a big fan of quivers on the side. Honestly, like 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 that. Honestly, is like one of my favorite fucking aesthetics for this shit. Eyes, mouth, rings. Yeah, honestly, this is pretty good. We can actually... I don't actually really want to change this pose all that much. This is... Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm down for this. Alright, let's give her a bit of a, a bit more of a smile. Actually, no, let's... Can we, like, get a smile that doesn't look creepy? Like... <laughs> That's a boat, anyway. Okay, so here's the thing. Like, fucking, uh, Mal is... <gasps> What's that? Jello love, welcome to... Thank you for following. Thank you, hope you enjoy your stay. So, the, um... Like, Mal is, like, actually a pretty good archer herself. It's just because she's a, uh, a soul knife. Like, she's almost always going to do more damage with her fucking conjured, conjured knives. But she can use a bow. I, I, think, I think it's an issue of Hero Forge getting bows backwards. Because... You want to draw the bow with your strong hand because you want to be able to like pull it back. So like, it's it's why like the 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 archer salute, you know, the way you just go like, nah, fuck you. That you do that with your right hand because those are your that's your that's your string pulling fingers. Um, I think this is a matter of Hero Forge creators not just just not understanding how actual fucking archery works. You know? Like, you, you hold the bow itself with your left hand because that, that doesn't require a lot of strength. And you pull it back with your right hand because that's... 
unless you're left-handed, then reverse this. If you're like, if you're right-handed, that's gonna be your strong hand, so that's the one where you pull the string back because that's the part that needs strength. All right. Uh, let's give some. Let's give some color to this. Let's put like wood texture on the base. Why not? And we'll give it a. We'll give it a pattern rim. Hell yeah. How would you, as a non-handed person? Uh, I mean, aren't you? Wait, hey. Okay, not to sound, not to sound, not to, like, transform into a horse fucker or anything, but aren't you a unicorn? Okay, so... Let's see, I actually have not decided, like, so she, I have not actually decided what her fucking hair and skin color is. Let's just go down the list. Like, just see what kind of presets we like, and we'll work from there. Mm-hmm. Kind of might feel with a redhead, but, like, then redheaded stepchild becomes... Jesus Christ. Monstrous, reptilian, subterranean... Oh, hey, look. Uh, aquatic. Let's go with the redhead and work from there. That's a little too pale of a skin color, but I'm liking the... I'm liking the redhead. Theme. Let's see, what do we like? Purple people beater... All Hallows Weave, Blood Mage, Add Autumn's Champion, Raisin Hero. Kind of like this Castle Noble look. By the way, literally starting, literally only doing these presets is like basis. Redhead with a bow immediately makes you think alloy. Fuck. I haven't even actually played that game. Mistwalker. Alright, I'm thinking... I'm thinking we go for... Where's against the Highland drawn with a cable pulled by the teeth? Oh, Jesus. No! Okay, I'm thinking that we go for... Uh... Okay, well, first off, let's, let's, like, color the base, because fucking the base is, of course, uncolored, because fuck. Where's wood? Last gem, flame, wood. There we go. Let's give it like a like a bleached wood base, and let's go for a metal metal around the base with a gold. There we go. Actually, let's get rid of this. Let's do like a like a like a like a plank. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want. All right. Upside ends this way, you can start a bow that would drive his... <laughs> Jesus, that's fair. Alright, so... I'm thinking... Okay, so first off, I do want to change the skin color. Actually, I, I know I keep saying, like, oh, first off, but... Let's make her just a little bit... No. 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 What is she right now? Right now she's medium light? No. Okay, she's 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 medium one. Hmm. Maybe maybe I'm just like maybe I'm just not like used to like looking at like skin, but like because this is too this is too dark for what I have in mind, and this is hella too light. Oh, I can stay, I guess. You can write kind of fanfic. Oh, God. Oh, Christ. All right. Yeah, I mean, I guess it can stay like this, I guess. Like, I just want, like, a like a shade darker, but, like, not... But, like, not this one. Like, this one is just, like, a little too dark for what I had in mind. So I guess it can stay like that. I mean, she was dead at one point, so I guess, like, you know, that makes sense. Like, you know, maybe, like, she's, she's, just, she's just... The color never really came back to her. Okay, so let's let's make our jacket dark and then give it some or maybe we should make it white. Maybe maybe we should make it light, light colored. I'm gonna be honest, I'm kinda liking the white jacket actually. 
Kind of like in the white jacket. Um, and let's pair it with some cool colors. Because, like, right up here, we got, like, all this, like, red and, like, etc. And then, like, goes to, like, more pale. Let's, like, add some, like, blue on, this, on, the, on the lining of the shirt. And then make the padding, like, a... Like a slightly darker? Because this is like padding. It's not supposed to be decorative. It's supposed to be protective, so... Okay, okay, I'm liking that, actually. That's actually looking pretty decent. And extend that coloring to this... That's honestly looking pretty decent, actually. That's I, I'm liking how that's coming out. Um, and let's... Okay, what do we want to... Do we want to just keep with the aqua color for... Oh, that's a slightly darker aqua, actually. That's really good. I like that. Okay. So that's what I'm thinking. We go for the we go for like the bright colors on, on on her body, and then like the the cooler, darker colors on her on her outfit. So let's should we maybe make this inside bit like more dark? Ooh, this is kind this kind of fucks right here. Hang on a moment. Yeah, this is th this bit's kind of fucking actually. Hang on a minute. Yeah, that arrow is massive. We we're not gonna we're gonna not we're, I can't fuck with it, so we're not going to touch it. I am actually kind of liking how this is coming out. Uh, let's. Do some leather for the straps here. Let's go with the dark. And we'll put a bit of... Go for a, a silver on the buckle here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, this is unironically actually looking pretty good. I was just kind of fucking around. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll find the actual colors later. But, like, holy shit, this is actually coming out pretty decent. Um... I'm liking that. I'm liking that a lot. All right, uh, belt. Belt is made of leather, so we're gonna use that. We're gonna go with with the dark shadow. Just to no, wait, no. Did I use the dark shadow? I... We'll use the cognac for the belt, and then we'll go with a sun dried yellow tail, maybe for the for the pants. Hmm. And we'll go with some. Go with black boots. And then we'll get like a little bit of a lighter color for the... For the trim. Okay, and the straps. All right. Now that bit on th those bits on the front are metal plates, so we're gonna give those. I'm gonna have those match up a little bit. By just giving them like a dark kind of chrome. Boop! A boopa! Thank you for the boopa, Brian. Honestly, this is this is actually turning out really, really good. Uh, gloves. Should we go for like the 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 rogue black on the gloves too? Oh, that looks really good. Just have those match. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, that is so cool. All right, hell yeah. Um, kind of get red on the uh on the on the quiver here and then 
have the string be yellow. Actually, no, we're gonna have it be purple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have the flower be yellow. With a red center. And let's have the, like, the, the outside of it be, be gold. Because why not? Why not? You know what? I mean, like, let's be honest. Her mother is affluent as shit. Like, like, Mal is, like, rich as shit. She's, like, literally one of the richest people in Waterdeep in the campaign right now, so fucking why not? Arrows. Actually, we're gonna go ma pe polish, maho polish mahogany for the arrows. Um... I'm gonna go for a dark purple on those. Um, and then a arrowhead. And we'll just have the, the, the bow be, like, the same, like, polished mahogany, and then we'll add some... We'll add some blue to the... To the, to the string here. Hang on, let me get a little bit darker. No. Yeah, no, I'll add blue to the strings. To the, to the, to the grip, grip tape. Not like a bit of a darker one underneath, like there. I am. This is fucking cool as shit. Unironically. All right. Um. Okay. Steel and steel. We'll get the same blue on the grip tape on the sword. And we'll give it a leather, a dark leather scabbard. And that is Gwen. That is unironically actually pretty decent. I, I like that a lot, actually. I should, I'm gonna send this to, I'm gonna send, like, I'm gonna take a pic, I'm gonna take a screenshot of this and send it to Kat, just cause... Okay, I'm, let's get, let's, I'm just gonna copy that, and we're going to... Uh... I meant to copy it, not save it, but... Okay. And let's get a up close image. So we can put it on the sheet. Do 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 do. And there we go. Gwen. Stop teasing me with the grapple. I have to work. Ah. But. Oh, but there we go. Like, that is. That's. That's pretty fucking good. That's pretty good right there. All right. So we don't have time to do her brother like I wanted to. But I'm going to be honest. I am. I'm really happy with how this character turned out. I. When I was like, okay, okay, so I'm gonna have to make this character in 5e and I'm gonna make it in Pathfinder. It was surprisingly easy, like, so in Pathfinder it was easy because, uh, you're provided with all the tools to make a character. Hi, Mystic, I just got done making a character, Halfling Ranger. Um, like, in Pathfinder it's really easy to make a character because all the tools are right here, free for anyone to fucking use. 
And for D&D, it's easy because I've been playing it for years, and also all of the things are right there because someone stole it and put it online. In a way that's easily fucking importable. Is she a Beastmaster who rides around on a gorilla? No, she is a Beastmaster who has a pet Tresim that her mother bought for her when she was adopted. The, the Tresim was a kitten when she, when she got it, and now she's an adult and so is the Tresim. And before you say Tresims are monstrosities, I don't care. It's, it's, we're using the Tasha's thing where it's, yeah, exactly, like, the fact they're classified as monstrosities is stupid. Uh, but yeah, so the, the main reason I'm saying it's a Tresim is because I'm gonna be using Primal Companion, uh, which allows you to choose the form that your beast takes, and I choose Beast of the Sky Tresim. I honestly, and, and look at the fucking stats we rolled, holy shit. Uh, with regards to crafting arrows in Pathfinder, uh, crafting a bunch of arrows will take you four days. But Treasure Vault added rules to reduce crafting time, so crafting items kind of a sporadic thing. Okay. It's, with crafting consumables we made in that. Well, that's useful. But yeah, like this, this was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun here. Uh, I hope you guys did too. I know we didn't talk about, uh, tabletop stuff as much as we should, because I kind of got lost in the sauce, and we just kind of were just, like, you know, shooting the shit. But... We made a really cool character here, and I am really happy with how they turned out. I have to be somewhere in 20 minutes, so I think we are going to uh, have to end this here. But, like, holy shit, still, look at this fucking stat spread. Like, oh my god, this character would be a goddamn monster to play. In a good way. Holy shit. Like, nothing below 14 except for strength, and it's 5v, so who cares about strength? Oh, jeez. So I'm going to raid someone, I'm going to get something to eat, and I will hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Uh, Mystic, I will look at that in just a moment. Oh, fuck. Oh, the, oh, the, the uh, modernized lever gun. Yes. Um, I will see you guys in the next one. We are going to be playing uh, Dragon Age Inquisition tomorrow at 2, and also we are going to be playing Solasta at 7 with Appleseed. Hopefully I will see you guys there. Uh, same dole time, same dole channel. Oh, jeez. Uh, we shall raid Paige. We're gonna raid Paige. Everyone say hi to Paige when you get there. Okay. Uh, bye-bye. Uh, I love you.